Hi everyone, today I have another quick tip for you and this quick tip is about a new modeling tool for Blender that has just been released a couple of days ago. The add-on is called Face Cutter and it is basically an extension of the functionality of Blender's Loop Knife tool. Once you've installed the plugin you can access it in edit mode. I've already prepared an object that we can use, so let's jump into edit mode. And if you right click, you will find face cutter right at the bottom of the context menu here. You can also right click on the tool and add it to the quick favorites or assign a shortcut if you want to. In order to use face cutter, you need to select one or more coplanar polygons. So let's hit three to go into polygon mode and I can now select polygons. If I select these two here and try to use face cutter, I'm getting this message that says that the tool only supports one face or multiple coplanar faces and these two are not coplanar. I can however select these three faces and these are coplanar. So right now if I use face cutter, I can access the tool and use it. Depending on the cut you use, however, and where you place your cut, for example, if I place the cut on this bottom polygon here and use a certain shortcut, it will only cut this polygon at the bottom. And if I place my cut on one of these top faces here, it will cut through both of these faces here at the top. But we'll get to that in a minute. Once you've selected the polygons and activated the tool, you need to select an edge from which you want to cut. And you need to left click on an edge to select it. You can zoom in, pan and rotate at any time during cutting. So that's pretty cool. And once you click on an edge, you can see that we have three snapping points, one on the left, one on the right, and one right at the center of this edge. And you will snap to these points automatically. If you don't want to snap to these points, hold down the shift key and you can slide the tool without snapping to anything. And as soon as you let go of the shift key again, you will snap to those three points. In order to make a cut, you need to left click to place your cutter and then you have two options. And I guess you've already seen that we also get this help over here on the left. So once I've placed my cutter, I have two options to make a cut. One is the Q key and one is the R key. The Q key will only cut the selected faces. In this case, it will only cut the two faces at the top. So if I hit Q, I will make a cut like this. Let's undo this and use face cutter again. So I'm going to place my cutter here and this time I'm hitting R and this will cut through the entire object. So everything will get cut no matter if it is selected or not. You can place your cuts anywhere you want. For example, I can place a cutter here. Let's place another one here and another one here. And if I don't like what I have, I can always hit Ctrl Z to go back one step at a time. If I want to make evenly spaced cuts, I can hold down Ctrl and scroll my mouse wheel up to create additional snapping points. And I can snap to each of them and place a cutter here. If I have a lot of snapping points, I can also hit the F key and this will place a cutter on each of the snapping points here. And again, if you want to undo this, you can hit Ctrl Z, but you will only go back one step at a time. So sometimes it's probably better to just use the escape key. And in this case, you have to hit escape twice. And there's more we can do. So let's grab this edge again. And let's say I want to make a couple of cuts like this and I want the same cuts on the other side. And if I want to do that, I can hit the S key and this will mirror the cuts over to the other side. And again, if I want to go back, I can only do this one step at a time. I can also rotate the cutters, but I can only do so before I left click to place them. Once I have placed a cutter, I cannot rotate it anymore. And for rotation, you have five keys. You can see them over here. Z, X, C, V, and the D key. Z and X will rotate the cutter five degrees, either in the negative direction, that's the Z key, or the positive direction, which is the X key. One thing that could be better in this tool is there could be an option to reset the rotation to zero with just a mouse click. The C key will rotate in one degree increments in the negative direction and V will rotate one degree in the positive direction. 
And again, if I don't like that and want to go back to zero, I'll just have to use the C key in this case until I'm back at zero. Of course, I can always hit the escape key and start cutting from scratch. With the D key, I can rotate 45 degrees. And if I hit D again, it'll switch to negative 45 degrees. Unfortunately, there is no option here to go back to zero. So I either need to use the Z and X keys, for example, to go back to zero or just hit escape twice and then activate the tool again. And I will be back at zero here. You can also align the cutter to one of the edges of the selected polygons. And in order to do that, you need to hit the A key. Well, first of all, I need to hover over an edge. Let's pick this one here and hit A. And now I can cut parallel to this edge here. And if I hit A again, hovering over this edge here, I will go back to the default rotation. And like I said, you can only align the cutter to edges of selected polygons. If I hit escape, for example, and deselect this polygon here and then use face cutter again, I can hover over this edge, but hitting A won't do anything. I can only align to the edges of selected polygons. And there's one more thing you can do. If I activate the cutter again and pick this edge here, you can cut along multiple edges in the same cutting operation. For example, I can place two cutters here, hit S to mirror them over. And let's say I also want to cut along this edge here maybe. And what I need to do to do that is hit the escape key once and then I can hover over any of these other edges here, left click to select the edge and then I can place another cutter here for example, hit escape, select this edge and maybe let's place two cuts here and then hit R to cut through the entire object. And that's it for this quick tip. This tool is pretty easy to use and I think it's pretty useful. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you again soon.